This is a day when we celebrate St. Sylvester the First. Now, to the medieval mind, St. Sylvester the First was especially important, uh, more so than people attribute his importance today. Uh, the situation is that he lived during a time when the Roman Empire went through a tremendous transition there because of the Battle of uh, the Milvian Bridge. And what happened there is that there was a pagan Roman Empire, and then Emperor Constantine came in with soldiers. There was a chai in the row that he saw in the sky, and he had that put on the shields of the soldiers, and that was basically an abbreviation for Christus, which is a word for Christ. Apparently, he didn't even know what that meant. And uh, he went into the Battle of Milvian Bridge and won. And then after Emperor Constantine won the Battle of Milvian Bridge, then what happened as a result is that Christianity became legalized in the Roman Empire. Now, Pope Sylvester I, he was Pope very shortly after the Battle of Milvian Bridge, and he would have been around living on the earth uh, prior to the uh, battle, and then after the, the battle had been won. So, he's very significant. There are a lot of accounts, medieval accounts, that uh, put St. Sylvester I as like a, a very close friend of, of uh, Emperor Constantine I. Uh, some even claimed, like with the donation of Constantine, that, um, that Emperor Constantine donated basically the whole authority to be over kings and whatnot, uh, and and be over the Roman government, as it were, to uh, uh, the Pope. And the situation is that that the donation of Constantine was used. That document was used later on to to show uh, how the Pope would have authority over all kings and, and whatnot in, in Europe, or I should say kings in Europe. And the situation is that more of a, a modern reader would see a lot of skepticism and, and doubt as to the some of the validity of some of the claims and documents that had been made by the uh, medieval people regarding uh, Pope Sylvester I and his relationship with Emperor Constantine. But we do know that uh, St. Helena, which is Emperor Constantine's mother, that she traveled the world and she was a devout Christian and uh, she was able to identify the sites that were important to Christianity. And then churches were built under the authority of Emperor Constantine in those places. And one of the places that she went to was, was the birth of Christ, and then I believe the location of the death of Christ, and, and then the... Uh, location of the burning bush there uh, and so you had the church and the nativity built the uh, holy sepulcher and then uh, saint catherine's monastery is built there in egypt on the location that uh, was understood that god appeared to moses at the burning bush saint helena's monastery or saint catherine's monastery i apologize saint catherine's monastery there in Egypt is is still still there and and uh, it's in a really remote location uh, something that 
really involves some some doing to to uh, have it established in such a remote location and and still something that you can go to and in in a a really weird remote location as it were hate to say weird but anyway based upon the fact that uh, St. Helena was able to uh, identify important locations and then churches were built under the authority of Emperor Constantine at those locations and, and huge churches I mean it certainly shows that uh, St. Pope Sylvester the First and Emperor Constantine, that they would have had a, a very good, good relationship, uh, in a one way or another. I mean, you know, because Emperor Constantine's mother was instrumental there, and and so you know, having churches built. So I mean. We can certainly see a lot of value in this, and and uh, I know too the fact that uh, with uh, Pope Sylvester the First, with the fact that so many churches and and big churches were established, uh, you know, under his reign, that uh, I mean it really shows how things had really changed for Christians under under his his reign there and and with new year's day being just upon us this is new year's eve it it shows sort of like the dawning as it were of the of the the christian empire you know it shows us the the uh tearing away as it were of the the pagan empire and, and the pagan oppression and uh sort of the dawning of of the the christian empire this is the seventh day of christmas here so uh you know we're more than halfway through the 12 days of christmas and uh you know you, you see a lot of value in this you see a lot of value in this i i know that uh it is unfortunate though that that there are documents like the donation of Constantine that that people have as much as as uh, uh shown to be illegitimate that have circulated and also to you know various accounts of the relationship between Constantine and Pope Sylvester the first that that uh, scholars and historians see as very questionable. It's unfortunate that that there's not more of a clear record where we can actually see uh, more of uh, the story there of Pope Sylvester the First and and the relationship with Emperor Constantine. But needless to say, uh, there's a lot of value in this. I mean. You know, if not for the Battle of Milvian Bridge there, uh, what would have happened is uh, you may still have some, you know, pagan, uh, pagan governments and, and uh, people having to be under, under governments that promote state gods and stuff that are false gods and and that sort of thing. So, Pope Sylvester the First, he was able to really ring in a lot of uh, uh, Christian freedom there, 